Hello, I'm Trey Zipperer with Buy Memorial Day, where we've made it our mission to clean every veteran headstone in America by Memorial Day. I'm traveling across the country to raise awareness about the condition of our veteran headstones by randomly stopping at cemeteries in each state to show you what the veteran graves in your area might look like. Today I'm in Colorado, Grand Junction, Colorado at the Grand Junction City Cemeteries. It's actually one large cemetery with several different sections with names such as Calvary, Masonic, Oddfellows, and Veterans. So let's get inside the cemetery and I'll show you what I found here in Colorado. I couldn't have been happier when I arrived at the Veterans section of the Grand Junction City Cemeteries. I mean, just look at these flags. And I'm sorry about maybe a little bit of wind in the noise uh, from the wind on my audio, but it's just perfect timing to see these flags flying. We've got a, a beautiful full-size flag on the flagpole behind us standing over these veterans. Um, all of these headstones are nice and clean. They're in great condition as if they belong in a national cemetery. But unfortunately, uh, they aren't all here in the veteran section. They're in different sections throughout the cemetery. So let's go to some of those other sections and show you where there might be some needs in this cemetery that if you live near Grand Junction, uh, if you could come out here and, and lend a hand, that would be fantastic. Let's go take a look at what some of the other veteran headstones look like. You can like. see the veteran section of the cemetery out there in the bright sunshine. And then you see these beautiful, large, shady trees. And underneath that shade, you see these stones that are black. That's the black algae growing. So this is the Odd Fellows section of the cemetery. And walking through the Odd Fellows section, you don't find as many veteran headstones or grave markers in this section, but they're here. You just gotta look for them. Um, and this is where walking the cemetery, paying attention, knowing what those veteran headstones look like, uh, they'll stand out to you once you've seen a few of them. But uh, there's a, a Union soldier Civil War upright white marble monument. And then this one, I happen to notice has an American flag next to it. My grandfather had two Purple Hearts in World War II, so I recognize that Purple Heart medal on this uh, headstone for Mark Rudd, Leo E. Mark Rudd. Um, must have been a World War II soldier born in 1911. Uh, could have been an airman, not sure. But uh, if you go around the back, you'll see that someone has affixed a bronze plate to tell us the story. Uh, he was actually Leo Markrud, Captain, United States Army, World War II. At the bottom, you see the BSM is Bronze Star Medal, and the PH is the Purple Heart. Um, so someone has taken the time to do that. They also have this flag. One thing to pay attention to in the cemeteries is, you see this hole at the end in the base, the concrete base? That's a wonderful place to put that flag. Uh, which keeps it out of harm's way from the lawn mowers and the weed eaters, makes it a little easier on the maintenance staff, which is part of what we're going to need to make sure we focus on as we honor all these veterans in America. We put these flags up next to these graves. We want to make sure we uh, put them where they're not going to bother the, the maintenance people. But uh, this isn't a headstone that we're cleaning because it's, it's a privately purchased headstone, but they are a veteran and so we can certainly uh, put a flag at their grave. Um, so just wanted you to know what that, that uh, bronze plate was on the back. So continuing on, right over here, we see our first uh, veteran ground level marker. And you'll notice uh, this stone is not in perfect condition. It has some black algae growing on it. It has grass uh, intruding around on the concrete base. Again, we see the flag placed here, which is wonderful, but it's uh, as part of the reason why the, the grass isn't trimmed is they don't want to knock that flag stick with the weed eater. It'll just fling it, break it. If you look on the back side here, we've got this circle hole in the concrete base. That's a, a place you could put a flag holder and, uh, and not be in the way of the maintenance staff. So this monument, this marker is made out of uh, granite, uh, but It'll look a lot nicer if we give it a, a good bath with some D2 or some wet and forget or another cleaning agent that has a um, quaternary ammonium compound as its active ingredient. 
Uh, you could probably do a lot of good with some water on this stone as well. Moving forward, uh, we see a uh, World War I soldier's upright white marble headstone. This headstone uh, appears to need, need a cleaning, but it also seems to have a little bit of uh, um, effervescence going on of some sort. Uh, not severe by any means, but uh, it it's, it's may not come out perfectly white, but a, a good a good cleaning would, would make it look so much better. And then trimming this grass around this base. You've got a concrete base at the bottom. And I think down here, it looks like there's a, a flag holder uh, on the ground. I don't know if that used to be a, a rod sticking out of there. Uh, there's an emblem here. Uh, you'll probably recognize that emblem if you, I don't recognize, I've seen it before, but I, I don't know exactly what it is. Uh, so that's, that's where a flag could possibly go. On the back side of this, in the ground, we have that, that hole, and that's where people are able to put their, their flowers. But you could also uh, you know, install a flag holder there. We see these black headstones some more. Um, here's a privately purchased headstone behind it is a duplicate stone uh, provided by the National Cemetery Administration. This isn't how it's supposed to work. If you have a private stone, you're not supposed to have a veteran headstone, but many people do that. This is the headstone of Corporal Ezra E. Janes, Company F of the 8th Vermont Infantry, uh, most likely Civil War Union soldier uh, because the birth year is 1834, so he would have been a perfect age for a Union soldier in the Civil War. You can see on this stone, this is white marble, and obviously that stone does not look bright and white uh, as those stones out in the veterans section look. So on the back side, it's got quite a bit of growth on it. This could use a, a, a good, uh, respectful, proper cleaning with the right uh, tools. Watch our video on how to clean a veteran headstone. Uh, as we continue on in the Odd Fellows section, come to another granite marker over here. And this one's got a lot more black algae growing on it. Also has that uh, round flower holder uh, on the back. Could be used as a flag holder. No flag on this particular stone. Either it got blown away, uh, run over by a lawnmower or whatever. Um, or just simply missed because, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't have any indication unless you know what you're looking for. And then we get over to this stone. This stone uh, is a white marble monument, a uh, ground level grave marker issued by the National Cemetery Administration. This is Clarence L. Glass from Colorado, private first class. Uh, we've got a concrete base around and there's no hole that's been cut uh, for flowers and things like that to be placed. However, uh, you'll notice this rod here, this metal rod, I've seen these before, and that has something screwed on the top, which we see next to it, it has one. I'm not sure what that old one was, but on the back side, that's an American Legion flag holder. So someone has taken the time to embed that metal rod down here into the concrete base and then right here is where the flag uh, is held in these two spots and the bottom of the flag stick rests on the top so this person that put the flag out they just didn't know that they had a flag holder handy ready to go which would keep this flag from falling over like it is and it would keep it out of the way of the lawn mowers and the weed eaters so I hope they don't mind, but I'm going to take this flag. I'm going to place it into the flag holder. And now you can see that's how the flag is to be displayed uh, with a flag holder. So that's another option. If you're not using PVC pipe, you can buy these various types of flag holders. Uh, they're usually about $25 uh, up to $50, depending on the type of material uh, that they're made out of. But this uh, marker would look absolutely beautiful with a proper cleaning. Uh, and I would include the base as well, get that concrete looking like it's new again. He's been uh, dead since 1933, 
but uh, the headstone and uh, grave marker can look as if uh, he was buried yesterday. So stepping back from the grave site of Private First Class Clarence Glass to put the location of his grave in perspective, we look directly across the street and we see the offices for the cemetery. And you would wonder why would there be a veteran headstone so close to the office and yet uh, not maintained in a clean, respectable manner? Well, that's because the cemetery and the cemetery staff are not responsible for cleaning headstones. Uh, that falls on the family of the deceased. Uh, that's why we focus on these headstones that are issued by the federal government because these grave markers remain federal property and we now have a protocol issued by the National Cemetery Administration that tells us how these stones are to be maintained and how to properly clean them. So go to our website at bymemorialday.com. You'll find a link to that document, to that protocol, and you can also find that at cem.va.gov. And uh, come over here to this office if you live in Grand Junction, Colorado area, introduce yourself, uh, let them know you'd like to volunteer to help clean and maintain these veteran graves. Uh, tell you they will welcome your uh, knock on their door. They'll put you in touch with the leader of the local movement to clean these headstones. And let's continue on through the cemetery and show you some more uh, of what's going on in Colorado and veteran headstones in Grand Junction City Cemetery. I'm crossing the street from the Odd Fellows section of the cemetery into the Masonic section of the cemetery, but I just have to share with you uh, this uh, monument here, and it says honoring our departed loved ones, I-O-O-F, that's Odd Fellows, and notice those three rings there together. Uh, so now we know what those three rings uh, symbol stood for at, at the one veteran headstone concrete base. It's odd fellows. So moving on across the street to the Masonic section, we see a, uh, a white monument over here, white marble monument. It's got a flag in front of it. And it's a World War II soldier born, or born in 1916, died 1983. But uh, when we pan over to the right, I see this short little stone. It's got the shape of a veteran headstone, but it's a little bit narrower. Definitely too short to be a veteran headstone. No flag. Uh, grass is not really trimmed too much around it. And when you get up close to it, uh, sure enough, this is a veteran headstone. Uh, this is the veteran headstone of Corporal A. Huxley, Company K, 2nd, Michigan, 2nd Michigan Infantry. This is an old stone. Uh, if you watch uh, my video about uh, the kind of the history of veteran headstones and how they've changed over time from uh, when they were first started just uh, during after the Civil War to now, this is a narrow stone, still uh, thick. It's got that uh, shield on it, but if you touch this stone, it wobbles. What that tells me is it's broken. Um, so not only has this stone sunken in the ground significantly, it's broken. So it's probably uh, come to the time where this stone needs to be replaced. Uh, that falls on a congressionally recognized veteran service organization. There is a list of those organizations and they have the, the authority uh, to tend to a stone like this. So if you're in the Grand Junction area and you're a member of one of those organizations, I encourage you to get out here to the cemetery and, and tend to, uh, to this stone and, uh, and look into whether or not this needs to be replaced. If simply honoring America's greatest heroes, our military veterans that have gone before us, isn't enough reason to get out into your local cemeteries and, and volunteer to clean these headstones, keep these graves uh, in a respectable, honored condition, keep the American flag flying all year long. If that's not enough, uh, maybe it's just the history that's contained in these uh, hallowed grounds. I'll take you on a quick history tour here uh, of America. 
Uh, we're going to start over here. We've got uh, the grave site of a Civil War Union soldier. This is Sergeant Stanley, Company K, 9th Illinois Cavalry. Uh, next to him, we have two Civil War veterans unknown. Five Civil War veterans unknown. We got a 1st Colorado Cavalry and we have a 20th Illinois Infantry. These are all Civil War stones. Over here we have a, a Confederate soldier from the Civil War. William Porter, Company G, 22nd Virginia Cavalry. I'm excited to look him up. Not sure if he's a Union soldier from the Civil War or a Buffalo soldier from the Spanish-American War. This is the gravesite of Elijah Hines, Company H, 18th United States Colored Infantry. Following the Civil War, most people don't even remember this one, but we have the Spanish-American War. Next, we move on to the trench warfare, World War I. World War I was the war to end all wars until a few years later, we end up with what's called World War II. Here at Grand Junction City Cemeteries, you'll also be reminded that not all military veterans in America are male. This is the grave site of First Lieutenant Hazel Wagner Pauler, United States Army, World War II, Army Nurse Corps. And let us not forget the Forgotten War, Korea. And another woman who fought for America's freedom, Mary Sweetman, California, United States Air Force, Korea. Our heroes from the 1960s and 1970s are, are growing old. We've got them here from the Vietnam War. Roland Romero, Lance Corporal, United States Marine Corps, Persian Gulf. In addition to the history as categorized by the various wars fought by America, I was also struck by the fact that so many states are represented here uh, in the veteran grave sites. Name a state, you're going to find a veteran from that state buried somewhere on these grounds. So there's a lot of opportunity here to get these veterans cleaned, to get these flags displayed on these graves the way that we'd like to have them done year round. Uh, the staff here welcomes volunteers to come out here and, and work in the cemetery. We have hundreds of veteran graves out here that have black algae on them. Not as bad as what I've seen east of the Mississippi, but uh, definitely need to be cleaned. Uh, so watch our videos on how to clean veteran headstones properly. Uh, read the protocol as issued by the National Cemetery Administration. If you're here in the Grand Junction area, help out in this cemetery and others nearby. If you're in the state of Colorado, get out to your local cemeteries, check it out and see if you don't have the same black algae growth on your veteran headstones in your backyard. I'm Trey Zipper with By Memorial Day. Hope you'd enjoyed this segment. Uh, we'll reach back out when we hit the next state. Thank you for watching.